Um, yeah. Works. It's a. Uh, well, Almost. <laughs> It's Easter Sunday in Berlin, and my name is Kalle von Karokti. Nice to meet you guys, and nice to meet you, Sharon, from yeah, this location. Yeah, Hi. It's a pleasure to meet you. Likewise. <laughs> you're on tour for a long, long time right now, and you've been on tour for many concerts. How yeah. so far? Uh, well, I'm looking forward to tonight because uh, we're playing Berlin, and Berlin always has a magic, you know, it's like, um, for me, Berlin has always been a very beautiful city, so I'm really happy to play here. And also, Colombia, how we played here so many times, really. I have a lot of memories of it. So. 2007, 2011. Yeah, well, uh, I, even before that, also it's 2003 with uh, Paradise Lost. Oh, yeah, but even. they you know, support that. Yeah, right? it yeah, doesn't matter, we were there. And 2007, <laughs> you played with the same support band like today, with Delaine. Yeah, exactly, exactly. They've been here before as well. Yeah. And why do you choose them right now again? Well, you know, it's. Uh, it's um, it's, 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 it suits uh, who we are, you know, so it's, uh, I think our fans will like them a lot. And Robert's brother is in the band, of course, and uh, it's just a cool band to take along, and they're fun being, uh, to have on the road as well. Yeah, and they bring out a new album like you do. Yeah, exactly. And um, but we don't want to talk to right now about the new album that so many people does. Oh, so okay. I want to do something different. Yeah, I think different. Okay. Mm -hmm. Can you remember the first time you listened to rock and metal? Was it influenced by the parents or by your brother? Uh, well, um, the first band I listened to was Deep Purple, actually, because my parents listened to that. My parents are like hippies, they played all kinds of music, Pink Floyd, uh, um, yeah, but like it's a Deep Purple, but also more rock kind of things and, and symphonic things like ELO and also uh, Jeff Wayne's World of War World was a f when I was four, <laughs> my mom and my brother said, because I had the first time I got pocket money, I was only sp allowed to spend it on, uh, on music. And I bought a cassette tape of Wars for Gold because they said so, and it scared the hell out of me because of the dun dun dun. It's like, ah, oh, what was this? I was like, into I don't remember. So, but that was my kind of thing. Oh, so I, bon yeah. yeah, Bon Yeah, I was four years old. Come on. So it scared the hell out of me. But nowadays, I think oh, that was pretty good. Maybe indirectly that influenced me as well. It's like, because it's very much a good invitation, like, you know, very bombastic and mm. big. Yeah. And uh, what was the first instrument you ever played? Or do you play uh, Well, I played a little bit, you know, a little bit guitar, but it doesn't happen. I would never play it on stage. <laughs> because I'm really hard. Try it out. No, no, I can't even play a song, so it's just more like playing chords and practicing. And sometimes when I want to write a song, it's like figuring out, okay, oh, I should play, I'm going to have this chord, you know, if I want to explain something mm. to someone else. Okay, so better singing. Yeah, and I tell them, you know, the guitar like this band, you know, or this song. Do you remember that kind of rhythm? I would like to have that rhythm with that piano and blah, blah, blah. Okay. Okay, and can you remember the first band you ever played in? Yes. That was not presentation. No, not at all, no. I, I had a school band when I was uh, 11 years old. Mm -hmm. I didn't have a name, which is like on regular, you know, and uh, lunch breaks we were allowed to uh, play and uh, everyone's like, what? It's like, okay, and uh, well, that, that was the first thing I did actually, and, but then the first real band I was in was Kashiro, in a blues rock band. Blues rock? Yeah, blues rock, yeah. <laughs> Guitar player really wanted to play long solos and Steve Ray Vaughan was really like, um, like all over the place, with long, heavy uh, and well, long guitar, uh, guitar solos anyway. Not heavy, but really, yeah, yeah and yeah, Gary Moore and those kind of things. Oh. And yes, yeah, so uh, we played a lot of those songs, but also Red Hot Chili Peppers, so mainly covers. And that's also why I left the band, because I wanted to make my own songs. And then I met Robert in the school, mm. and we had a school band. And uh, after that, um, he also had his own band, already had a record, uh, a record label and everything. Oh. And he, that, we, that he was signed by, and at the time it was called The Circle, but it was exactly the same kind of music we're making now. And it was early 92, yeah, 91. Not so far away. Yeah, well, that was uh, <laughs> it's, it's almost 20 years ago. Oh, yeah, well, 22? Yeah, 22 years ago. So we were really young when we started just making this kind of music. Mm. Yeah. And can you remember the first gig you ever played in your life? Yes. Where was it? Were you on the, with the band or? The first gig you ever played. Doesn't matter if you played solo or. Uh, yeah, I did at school. We had this sound mix show because they, we, like, I, I didn't have a band that wanted to perform. And I was still in a school band, you know, 11 years old. And I had a song that I really loved. I loved the POW, Shining Your Hand. You don't know it? Yeah. No. It, was, it was a really beautiful song. But I sang another a different song than, than that song because that was a single on the radio. And I, I just loved it because she had this really Irish kind of uh, sound in her voice. And I loved it. And I sang it before the whole school. 
and it was like a school night that you were allowed to um, perform one song. So like an open stage? Open stage, yeah, yeah, that was really cool. And what was it for a feeling to be on stage and sing songs for public? That was for me like a test, like, is my voice good? Because I love singing and I was really, get, really always very happy to sing songs and, uh, and I wanted to do that with a band and those kind of things. So I had a dream and, and I just wanted to know, do I have any chance Do people like my voice? And so that was for me like a test case. Like, uh, just going to do this and see if I don't die on stage. You know, if I don't die, I probably live and I'm probably going to do it again. If they just like it this much, then I will do it again. Yeah, and over 20 years again, you stay on big stages like yeah, exactly. Seawall. Yeah, but it was pretty um, a contrast with my, uh, with my character because I was a very shy girl always. And so really? Step, yeah, really I was. Yeah, I learned to be more <laughs> outspoken. And, but yeah, this is also a side of me. But, um, People that don't know me, I was pretty shy as a child, especially at the age of 11 as well, because I was just, yeah. so it was different than the ball game. And for me, it was like really like a big step to step into the limelight and just take my own time and say, mm -hmm. like, look at me, I, can, I would love to sing for you. And it was like something that I would never ever do with anything else, but music was such an important thing for me in life. So, yeah. And it's always the yeah. one thing for you to now. Yeah. Come back to Delane, you choose them um, because it's used to the music. And they're a great band. Mm -hmm. uh, is it for you really important to have a support band that's used to the bands? No, actually, it? it's it's the exception. Actually, we would like to have somebody who is uh, like last time we had Trigger Finger uh, mm -hmm. on board, and they become really uh, well known in also in Germany now. And uh, and that's a band that we like listening to. So, uh, I love the music, and I like the band members also very much. They're very rock and roll, very cool guys and uh, they're really, in a different way, they're really, people are really surprised because it's not really typical, uh, 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 very much like a band-like organization, but uh, they're so, they're such good musicians that they, they were really warming up the audience in a different way and it was different music, so it was like, um, uh, still we wanted, it's a very good band and that's why we chose them also and we like their music, and, but they're very different from us, which is amazing. Uh, the best you have to think that you've been listening to a whole show, same kind of music, which is with Elaine, of course, more or less. Uh, but I do know that the fans will like it very much as well. And I and the uh, Trigger Finger, everybody loved them also when they went home. Trigger like, Finger was pretty cool as well. Yeah. Like, yeah. And for support band, it's really important to play on a stage with a big band. Yeah. And would you say it's a, for a support band or for a younger band really important to do um, and to? Pay sometimes for the shows um, to play for a bigger public, or to say, hey, you don't have to pay for a support place, just play. Um, I don't know. Because you know, you know, um, some of the bands have to pay uh, to pay for a support gig to pay to play. Yeah. Um, would you say that's okay for a young band to invest money for that? I would, yeah, I would do it within limits because you need to know if it's going to be an audience that will like. Your music, you have to know. There's a certain type of audience for every sort of kind of music, of course. And if this band will get you to maybe a bigger stage where you get paid instead of you have to pay, yes, of course. Uh, like we did with Paradise Lost, although we didn't have to, you know, it was more like an investment for us. It cost a lot of money because we had to go on tour, hire a bus, and those kind of things. So if you have to pay also, again, uh, you know, we don't let our uh, supporters pay. Uh, it's more like because it's already an investment for the band itself to really, you know, go with the band. And um, so it's more like, um, uh, what so I think they should do it if they think they will get to a bigger stage because of it, yeah, yeah most definitely. Because you get, an, uh, you get uh, it's, it's like um, an advertisement for yourself. You have to really show what you can do in 40 minutes or 30 yeah. minutes. Uh, but you know, also need to know what kind of limitations there are uh, from the, the, the main act, you know, because sometimes they take you on tour and they let you pay and they don't give you the, the space to even do a little bit of your own show and then you know then you have to really weigh which is the most yeah, logical choice to make are you going to take that chance but it's very small or is it going to be do you have a, reason, a reasonable chance to get to it um, do you have time to see some of the younger bands like the Netherlands or do you go to the pubs I mean you are a mother from Ch uh, three children so yeah. children's story and so it's going to be a problem to see something. Do you have time for? 
Uh, not really, but when we play, of course, at festivals, uh, I take my time to really, really to look at them. Um, oh, what are they saying about this band? I'm looking it up on the internet, and then, and then I really take my time, especially for young bands, because it's fun to see new, uh, new, uh, fresh blood. Because I think that's the future, of course. Yeah. Um, I think uh, I saw this um, this uh, this English band on, uh, um, on this, uh, the whole band. Thing that we're doing it on the internet with this uh, the whole band uh, did you know it's like you can play with the band you just delete one of our band members and then you can play to be a case a bass player or you can add something to it. it's like a whole band it's, that's how it's called the whole band um, anything uh, anyway but there's a new new uh, new thing new platform and especially for iPad it is and um, anyway there was this band called uh, oh god I kick 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 no Kick, uh, kick, kid. Oh, I'm sorry. Maybe you have to take that. When you know the name, then yeah. you can write it down in the yeah. comments. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, that was really cool. Ben was like, "Wow, how cool this is!" It's really like the '70s band, and then uh, they had some blues influence, but so very, oh, unbelievably cool. It's like, wow, it really inspired me immediately to write music again. It's like, that's what you love doing. So when you go on concert, you have the time to see and what. What you're um, looking for at the band? Do you see how they go on stage? Do you listen to the sound, to the to the um, melody, or to the text? I listen mainly to uh, the first impression, always the music itself, and not the lyrics. Or the second part, of course, lyrics do add to a certain emotion. So you you might not hear the whole content, uh, the context of the of the whole lyrics, but you hear certain words and certain sense, and they have to speak to you, and that, that will give a certain emotion. And I think that's important. And, but also how they approach the audience, how are you going to play with the audience. It's always like a, a game between you and uh, as a band and the audience is a very important game that you have to play and think about before you go on stage. So how am I going to get them on my side that they're going to like me also and also uh, that you become like one. You know, music and audience become one. That's the most intense and most beautiful thing you want to reach is that, that's, that you can reach on one level. And how important is a light show for the songs? The light show? Well, they can add, of course, to the ambience and uh, to, the, uh, to the feeling, and it's important, but during daylight, you have to do it with what you got, of course. On the festival, yeah. yeah. But when you're on tour, like, like you, when you're on stage, do you recognize what's going on in the light? Do you see what's, what the light shows do? No, because when you're on stage, it's different than from when you're in the, in the audience. So, what I do, I look at films on the internet, like, okay, this works, this doesn't work. You know. And and we have to because it's our show. We have to know what the light guy is doing, so we're instructing him again. Like maybe we should change this because I'm saying something to the audience, and I'm totally in the dark. You know, you should keep your spotlight there. You know, yeah. or here you shouldn't because then I really want to pull up my pants a little bit because <laughs> I know I've been jumping, uh, you know, the whole night. So that's out. Don't put me in the spotlight or whatever. So every time after the show, you see some videos on the internet, and you're watching, and you. Think about what you can do better. Yeah, of course. It's always like, yeah, I think that's important. I think uh, it's not constantly, but it's like shaving, you know, putting the, the dots on, mm -hmm. on, on everything, you know, like okay. a cherry on the cake, make it complete. But you know, uh, the most funny thing is actually when it's, a show is spontaneous. And that's, right. that's yeah. Like um, when you do a duet with Charlotte and um, um, was it female? Voice, yeah, voices. Yeah. Uh, I saw the yeah. video, that was great. Yeah, it was nice. Yeah, yeah. I like it also. It was really fun. Um, and do you have sometimes the time to travel around the cities if you don't do interviews? We did today. I did, oh, yeah, I went to Berlin. Yeah, oh, fortunately, everything was close. But I didn't go for shops. I went to, for, to see a little bit of Berlin. And, uh, and, well, and there was this uh, street musician, and he was playing on, on the road. And it was such, I think it was, I don't know where he was from, but. Uh, some Caribbean place probably. It was a like really Bob Marley kind of song as he was playing, and he was like, "I think you're from a rock band, aren't you?" And we were like, "Yes." <laughs> Do you want to sing a song? And and I did. Really? <laughs> yeah. Spontaneous. Yeah, very spontaneous. And I was looking up, like, which song do I know? It's like, because he, he played a totally different kind of genre. But, and also, so did, in the end, the only thing that we had that I asked him, do, can you play Jimmy Hendrix's Little Wing? Because I love that song. I played it many times when I was in the cover band. And he said, no, no, I can't play that song. Okay, but, uh, okay, well, he said, Hotel California. I said, okay, but I have to look up the lyrics because, you know, it's a long time ago that I sang that song. From the Eagles. From the Eagles, oh. yeah. And we sang it together, but he sang it really, and he sang, uh, like, uh, um, Welcome to the Hotel California. You know, like, really like a Jamaican way. And I was like, okay, this is a different rhythm. Okay. And then I was looking at the telephone. I was like, okay. And then 
This was fun. It was really fun. Yeah. Is there a video from that? Yeah, I mean, yeah, they filmed it, and, and the okay. people were coming more and more and more around. It's like, okay, <laughs> that's scary because it was very spontaneous but, and it was fun, but it was also like, okay, why am I doing this? Like, <laughs> but I loved it. So that's if, why. It's so <laughs> guys, in the next come time, come to Berlin, and you'll see Shadow on street. Yeah. Give us some money. Yeah, give me some money. Well, I, I bought a CD for me, so you can take a free CD from me because it was really cool that you did that. And, Right. And uh, but I bought it in the end because I thought, yeah, he's a fellow musician. He's standing on the street, and I'm, you know, it's like, I, I, so I bought a CD, and, and my friends at work I also bought a CD. Would, would you ever do a street concert for uh, maybe 20 minutes or? I would love to do that. I think that would be fun. But it, yeah, um, maybe a presentation, acoustic concert on the street. I did in the past when we, just before Ice Queen came out. We, we, you know, people didn't want to play us on the radio, and um, we felt like, you know, we're going to just play on the streets. And we did, and uh, we did that like I think 20 times. But also in stores, together with out on the street, just in the middle of a city, in a, and and uh, that was great fun. And it was also a bit scary because it was like okay, you know, like that. But it, we learned a lot from it. You don't to, know what happened. No, you don't know what happened. And people really liked it. Yeah, it was really nice. You were not. I mean, yeah, it's something special. Yeah, you exactly. Stage. Yeah, people exactly. Same level. Yeah, but it was all like. Um, it was around, around the time there was a lot of open stage in, in Holland that you could just be there and there was equipment and, and it was also organized from the in stores to say, like, okay, uh, we said like we're going to play on the streets and then, uh, okay, it's good. But we had this in store kind of thing outside and inside and we had like 20 shows mm -hmm. in a few days and it was fun just driving from the north to the south to the east to the west. And people started, you know, recognizing us and it's like, okay, more like the song also. And that's also, I think, that helped getting people playing it and in the end also a bit on the radio yeah. and liking the time with that. Which pubs and bars would you prefer or would you recommend for some German newcomer bands to play in the Netherlands? In the Netherlands? Yeah. Pubs and bars, well, that's difficult. I think that in stores would be really cool to do because people really like that. It's not very common anymore nowadays. People don't do it that much anymore. But it still really helps because people can buy a CD immediately if they want to. And, you know, um, and I think um, it's very sympathetic when you do something like that because you're very close up with the audience and people really like it when they have this interaction with you very close up and intimate. And, and uh, we did it lately also in America now and uh, a few in, in the UK and people really really liked it a lot and a lot of fans just came over and they were in a very small venue of 200 people or even less 50 or 20 yeah. and they loved it and it was fun, fun, fun doing. I saw the Beatsteaks, a band of from Berlin, they're really yeah. huge here in Germany. Yeah. I saw them in Finland and Helsinki in a club in front of 250 people, yeah. 200 of them being German. Yeah, really? And really fun. <laughs> but one week later they played here in Berlin in front of 15,000 people. So yeah, that's great. Yeah, but that's lovely because yeah. We you know we played in uh, when we played in America for the first time. We played in the support act for Nakuna Coil because they've been touring forever in in America. And then we came there and we felt like, oh, we're gonna play really nice venues. And then we played in bars and everything, and it was really fun because we played. But it was, we were playing there with five other bands. It's like really, this was the stage. It's a very small here. This was the stage. Drums, everything. We were like packed and drums in my neck and everything. And but we learned so much from that, so much, and it was such a, it was so rock and roll. I loved it. And then we went home to play Pinkpop, which was like fifty thousand or more people mm -hmm. for stage. And then we had to go back to America, going back again to this really small. And it was fun. But we never rocked more than we came from America because we had only a post stand to play on, and then playing on such a huge stage, people were like, whoa. They're moving a lot, yeah. We were like, yes, space. <laughs> it's like the rehearsal room you have. Right? Yeah, because right? yeah, no, this is this is really the really rehearsal room kind of stuff. Uh, yeah, this was really sometimes the, the place we had to play on for the stage. Wow. Well, yeah, but, yeah, it was fun. It was 2007, you know, it's not that even long back, but oh, it was the first time we went to America and we thought, like, you know, it's gonna be fun. And the Kunakoi was great to to hang out with and nice people. And so. yeah. It's really important to stay in contact with great musicians from other countries and uh, yeah, it so is. Um, how many contacts do you have? I've got a lot of contacts, yeah, of course, but it's more, it's, but you don't always keep them up, you know, it's like more like when you, you see each other again on the festival, I met, met Christina again also in Belgium again, the female forces, they play there. And um, it was just fun seeing her and then just talking to her, you know, as long as we could, and then she had to go off. And sometimes they come to really great duets together. Yeah, and I just, yeah, yeah, of course. And Tara is also a lovely person that we actually never met before, but it's, uh, you know, women, they have to stick together. You know? 
the fact that there are many women in the metal and I think you can help each other with that here and there and just have fun also. It's, it's, it's so much uh, enriching your life when you work together and help each other a bit. There's no competition. And it's really important for yeah. younger bands as well. So yeah. when you start a band, yeah. stay in contact with other bands, yeah. learn from each other. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Learn from each other and, and also give each other a bit space, you know, it's like uh, if people don't like your music, it's because maybe you should have written a better song, but it's not because the other band is better because they uh, have more success. Because, you know, it's like the competition is only to, with yourself, that's what I mean to say. You're the, the determine if, if you have success or not. You're, you know, if you write good songs, then you'll get there. If, it's not because the other band is, uh, how do you say it? It's not because the other band is better or worse. It's, it's all about what you do yourself and you're, you know, you're, you're determined if it's going to be a success or not because the other band is better or less. Or, yeah. Do you understand? Yeah, understand. Yeah, yeah, okay. <laughs> Hopefully the other guys yeah. understand as well because, yeah, it works. Yeah. yeah. Um, then I have a question from a fan. She asked um, the question, um, there was in a few, in the, in the past albums, in the first ones and the second ones, you got some sort of, you know, many lyrics about the Mother Earth and everything, yeah. and it influenced you and really much. And she asked, why don't you choose these topics in a, yeah, nowadays? Well, it's, it's been a topic that, uh, you know, we, we dedicated the whole album to Mother Earth, actually, and, and I think uh, it comes back, like, you know, like, uh, with, with the Sun and Force, we have different songs, like, um, uh, oh, God, so <laughs> many uh, Title. But there are several songs that are called, that, that deal with the environment, you know, but in a different way, less spiritual maybe, but it's more about pollution and those kind of thing. And and but we're not, you know, we're a band that is really talking a lot about politics and those kind of things, and also about environment and how we see life, but also telling epic stories uh, through that way. And uh, but in every album we do it in a different way again, and it's, uh, because otherwise you would just have lost so much. And, and you know. But we're not a band that's like like uh, like um, a punk band who's really upfront with their lyrics and and expressing. We're doing there's a we we we're, we sing uh, we sing and play a lot with metaphors, so so people might not directly recognize it's political or environmental. Sometimes they do, but sometimes they don't. You really have to go into the lyrics and see what they're writing, and it will be there. Yeah. So hopefully the question is answered. Yeah. So, I think so. Yeah. And I think that's good. Two questions. I okay. Some um, yes. The first one is, um, what is your all-time favorite metal band? Where you can choose the members. You can choose maximum six members, they can be alive or already dead. And you can choose which position from which band. Oh, this is difficult, come on. I know. <laughs> I know. Um, Steve from uh, Iron Maiden. Bruce Dickinson, singer. No, not singer. Oh, I love him also. Becky. <laughs> vocals, uh, but I consider it's not a metal band, but it's uh, I really. I, it can be a rock band as okay, well. Okay, so. uh, Kurt Cobain, mm -hmm. singer, my favorite singer. Okay, Kurt Cobain, Steve Harris. Steve Harris, oh God, oh God, oh God, oh God, oh God, oh God. Um, <laughs> um, yeah. You don't have to choose six members. Four or five. Oh, I, I, like uh, someone, uh, I don't know, someone from Ultra Bridge because I love Ultra Bridge very much as well. Uh, can be anybody, drummer or whatever, you know, because I just want to mention the name. Uh, uh, what else? And I have four? Um, three? Three right now, when you three. say one of the Ultra Bridge guys. Yeah, okay, three. Um, Metallica, Metallica bass player. Rob to kill you. Yes. Okay. Um, <laughs> uh, one more. Keyboard. So, uh, keyboard. Oh, okay. It's up to you. What do you want to choose? Tori Amos uh, as keyboard plays. <laughs> Tori Amos is not a band. Tori Amos. She's not. It's not. not it's, it's more alternative rock. Oh, okay. alternative. You don't. You know. You don't know. Sorry. It's not. It's not metal or anything. It's not even rock. But it's more alternative. Very okay. beautiful. She does great for this. But I think she also plays beautiful on piano. Her. Okay. Number five? Yeah. And what would be the name of this band? The coolest band on earth. <laughs> okay. Sharon, sure, then I have a last gift for you. Oh! Small one. Wow. Like a small button for us? I love buttons. Really? Yes, I do. Oh. 
And you can wear it on shorts, guys. Yeah, and this I'll put it on my head. Makes a promotion for you guys. Here we go. And then, uh, thank you. You're most welcome. Hope you like the questions. And, yeah, uh, mostly. Thank you very much. Good luck with it. Goodbye, guys. <laughs>